In today's video, we're going to learn a technique through which we can create infinite 3D mazes just like this. They might not be solvable, but still will look pretty cool in your renders. We won't need any external add-ons, so let's figure out how to do this, all within Blender geometry nodes. In our default scene, we'll bring our cursor to the junction of these two windows, click and drag to create a new window, and we'll change this from the 3D viewport to the geometry node editor. Then we'll press this plus button to create a new geometry node tree, after which we'll select the group input and tap X to delete it. Next, we essentially need a grid on top of which we'll be creating this maze. So for that, that, we'll search for a grid node and we'll plug the mesh into the group output. Now we need to procedurally be able to control the size. So let's search for a value node and then let's plug this value into both the X and the Y sockets. Now to make this into a single connection, let's press shift right click and drag to create a new reroute point. But to do this, you have to have the node wrangler add on enabled. Next for the vertices, we want it to always have 10 times as many vertices as the size, which means for each meter, there will be 10 points created. So we'll search for a math node and we'll change the type from add to multiply and we'll multiply it by a value of 10 and simply connect this value up here and this into both the X as well as the Y vertices. Now we can control the size of the grid and the number of points by using a single value over here. So let's say we make a five meter by five meter grid, we get this. If we switch over to wireframe view, you can see how by increasing this value, you increase the number of points as well and each square always remains this exact size. Now, if you want to keep this as whole numbers only, you can always search for a math node and set it to round and that way this will always be whole numbers so you don't have to worry about anything else. For now, let's keep it at a value of three and start instancing the walls of the maze on each of these points. So to instance onto each of these points, let's search for an instance on points node, plug that in after the grid. And for the instance, we'll actually use a simple cube. Now we'll have to change the size of this cube, but for now we'll plug it in so that we can actually see it. We still have wireframe switched on, so we can't really tell the cubes properly. So we'll switch back to object view. Next, we'll decrease the size on the X, Y, and Z to 0 0.01 for now, and then start playing around with the values. So let's start increasing the Y value till they join for now, but we'll have to increase this even further after the next step. So what we want is each of these lines, which are actually going to be our mazes walls have to be rotated either by 45 degrees to the left or 45 degrees to the right. So to rotate them, we have this rotation socket here. So let's press shift day and search for a combined XYZ node because we want to rotate it only about the Z axis. Now, if we plug this in, the values that come into the rotation socket are going to be radians. So that's why if we rotate it by 90 degrees, it's not going to be 90 degrees. Instead, it's going to look like it's an arbitrary rotation. And that's because this is taking in radian values. So instead of typing in values in degrees, we'll directly give in the radian values for 45, which is I divided by four, which should give 45 degrees. Now we want a random number of them to turn in the other direction as well. But before we get to that, let's change the size of the cube so that they touch perfectly when they're like this. So let's press seven to go into the top view and then start increasing this Y value till they're perfectly touching. So I'm going with the value of 0.146. And now let's rotate a random number of them in the opposite direction. So to get rotation in the opposite direction, we need another combined XYZ node. And this time we have to change this Z value to the negative. So we'll just click here and add in a minus sign and we have to mix these two. So let's search for a mix node by pressing shift A and searching for mix and plugging that in over here. But we have to change the type from float to vector and then connect the vector A from this combined XYZ node and vector B from this combined XYZ node. For the factor, we can use a Voronoi texture and essentially it'll be similar to techniques used in many of the other videos on my channel before. So if we reduce the randomness down to zero, we know that the color socket will give out different valued squares. So we can just plug that in over here. And then by plugging this result into the rotation, we should get them to rotate by random numbers. But the problem is right now, the Voronoi is giving out different factors. So it's combining a little bit of this and a little bit of this on each of them. So we're not getting either plus 45 or minus 45. So to make it either plus or minus, we need this color to be either black or white and no gray values in between. For that, we can search for a color ramp node and plug it in just after the Voronoi texture and change this from linear to constant. And now by dragging the white slider in, we get about half of them to be turned in an opposite direction. Now it looks like it's a fairly regular maze right now. If you wanted to have a lot more randomness, you can simply increase the scale on the Voronoi texture and you get a lot lot more randomness added in. If you want to generate this maze randomly, you can always change this from 3D to 4D. And now the W value becomes like a seed value and you can change it to get an infinite variation of different mazes. Now the maze may or may not be solvable, but it looks fair enough like a maze. To make this 3D, you can go back to the actual cube node and change the Z value and increase it to something fairly large to give it some height. Now, if you got these to match up perfectly, you won't have these corner issues like over here. But in case you are having those corner issues, Issues, start increasing the Y value until you get a value which perfectly matches. So in my case, it's 0 0.156 that makes it match. So this is about it for the generation of the maze. 
you can always change the value over here to get a larger maze. So this is a value of four, five, six, and it just goes on, or you can reduce it to something smaller. So I'll keep it at three. Next, we have to give this some material. So let's press shift A, search for a set material node, plug that in after the instance on points and choose the default material. Then we'll press shift A, search for a mesh plane and scale it up to some arbitrarily high number. Let's go with 10 and that should be good enough because this plane is going to act as our floor. Now we need to give this its own material. So let's go to the material properties and press new to add in a new material. Now, before we actually start changing the materials, let's set all of our defaults. So let's go to our render properties, switch on ambient occlusion, expand it, change the distance to something like one meter and change the factor up to something like five. Then we'll switch on bloom and screen space reflections. Then we'll go to our output properties, change the frame rate to 30 frames per second and frame we're going to keep at 150. The output folder can be wherever you want it to be. File format, we're going to choose FFmpeg video and we're going to have an encoding container to MPEG4 and an output quality of Perceptually Lossless. Then to actually see the changes, we're going to change our viewport shading to rendered and we're going to choose our default light and press delete to remove it. After that, we can go to our world properties and change the color all the way to a bright white. And this is the base of our scene. Now to give the materials, let's select our geometry node object and change this from the geometry node editor to the shader editor. Then we'll simply make this a lot more metallic. I'll go with a value of maybe 0.6 and I'll reduce the roughness down to maybe 0.3 and I'll give it a slightly bluish tint on the base color. So I'll increase that all the way to white and give it a slightly bluish tint. And then for the floor, we already have material 001 added into it. What we'll do is reduce the roughness and increase the metallicness. Along with that, I'll change the base color to make it a lot darker. And that's actually all I'm going to be doing for the material setup. Next, we can set up our camera and animate it. So let's select our camera, press Alt G to clear location, Alt R to clear rotation, and then press R X 90 to rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. Next, we'll press G Y and bring it back to the start of this particular mesh and then press zero to go into the camera view. Then we'll press GZ to move it up and then RX to just rotate it down by a little bit. So you can always keep moving it on the Z axis and the Y axis just to make sure that you have the grid at a size that you want. Then we'll select the camera properties down here. And from this properties menu, we'll change the viewport display passport out all the way to one so that we don't see anything outside the camera view. After that, we'll select this maze that we created and duplicate it so that we can actually make this a seamless loop. We'll press three to go into the side view and then we'll zoom in, press shift D Y and just move it until it perfectly matches up. When we get it to perfectly match up, we have to note the exact value that we're using. So in my case, a value of 3.118 meters seems to be perfectly making these line up. So I'll keep it as that. And then I'll select my camera, go back to frame zero, press I location, and then go to frame 150, press G Y 3.114, which was the exact number that I had moved the maze by, and then press I location. I'm not sure if it was 114 or 118, I forgot, but you should remember it while trying to make it perfectly loop. Then I'll come down here, press T linear. And then if I play the animation, we should have an almost seamless loop. Right now we are coming to the end. So let's take this, press Alt D once again, Y and choose 3.114 and then press Shift R to repeat the action one more time. Now, if we press zero to go into our camera view, this is exactly what we have. Beyond that, I also see some edges coming out over there. So I'll just take my camera and move it down on the Z axis or rotate it on the X axis until those edges are no longer seen. So that's actually all there is to create this maze-like pattern that goes on forever. Once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and press render animation. I really hope you enjoyed this particular tutorial. And if you did, definitely check out other tutorials on my channel. I post a video every single day, so I'm sure there's a lot for you to learn. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know in the comments below, and I'll respond to as many as I can for as long as I can. Until the next video comes out tomorrow, thank you so much for watching, keep creating, and stay creative.